weather day in sunny Central Florida as we continue with our spring training broadcast schedule here from Orlando. As the late great Ernie Banks might have said, it is a perfect day for two. But we only have one ball game today. It's the Detroit Tigers. Big game for them and the Atlanta Braves here from Champion Stadium in Lake Buena Vista, Florida. Hi again, friends. Chip and Joe back with you at the ballpark. Last couple of games, Joe, we've talked about Braves starting pitchers in competition for two remaining roster spots in rotation. That's not the case for today's starter. Shelby Miller is going to make the team, and today we get our first look at him. Yeah, of all the deals the Braves made in the offseason, Chip, this guy was the one that was expected to make the most immediate and the biggest impact on the ball club. Shelby Miller is a good pitcher and was Rookie of the Year, third in the Rookie of the Year voting two years ago. Last year, a 10-game winner. He's got a good arm. He's a tough competitor. I got a scouting report from Adam Wainwright about him right after the deal. He said, you're going to love the guy. He goes to the mound every day, every fifth day, ready to bite nails and attack somebody. So the Braves are going to welcome him in the middle of the rotation, but he's a top of the rotation type talent. That's a treat for Atlanta fans. We'll see Shelby Miller today. We'll also see Jason Grilly and Craig Kimbrell take the mound. It's the Braves. It's the Tigers. Beautiful day for baseball. Starting lineup. Some more coming your way right after this. in cutting-edge communications and entertainment services at the new SunTrust Park. With the highest capacity network, delivering multi-gigabit data speeds to residents, businesses, and sports fans alike, Xfinity is the future of awesome. Big crowd in Orlando today for the Braves and the Detroit Tigers. Big game for Detroit, too, Joe. They've got... One of their big bats making his debut this spring, and that's Victor Martinez coming off knee surgery. Man, he had an unbelievable year offensively for this offensive-laden Detroit Tiger Ball Club. Yeah, he gets a start today here, and Miguel Cabrera is getting his, getting his first start of the spring over in Lakeland in another game for the Tigers. So a challenge for Shelby Miller. The Braves starters making his fourth appearance of the spring. His Braves debut came against the Tigers. It didn't go well. However, his last two outings, 
have been much better. I would assume, Joe, much more comfortable pitching in this Braves organization now. Absolutely. His last seven innings, over a couple of outings, he's given up just six hits and one run, struck out five, but his last outing, he went four shutout innings, and he's kind of rounding into form, let's say, and getting more comfortable in his Braves uniform. He's 24 years old, 6'3", 195, out of Brownwood, Texas. Throws hard. He's got a good slider, curveball, and changeup. But one of the things that really has made a difference for him was the work he put in at the end of last season. He had a real good second half by really utilizing a two-seam fastball that helped get some good movement down and away from lefties. We'll see if that's in effect for Miller today as Ian Kinsler of the Tigers steps in. He's their second baseman and leadoff man today. Kinsler, another good spring. A couple of homers hitting 400. Those were his numbers last year. He looks to be ready to go for the Tigers. There's that sinking action, but it missed off the plate. One ball, no strikes for Kinsler. Rip foul pass third. All the talk, Joe, about declining offense in the major leagues. That is not the case when you talk about the Detroit Tigers. No, and, and think about how they, they traded away Prince Fielder. You know, they had him at first base for a year and decided, you know what, we don't need all that offense. We need a second baseman. They get Kinsler over here, and he's a solid offensive player. That stayed high. Two balls and a strike. You got Kinsler. You've got Jose Iglesias on deck. Then Martinez. Yoana Cespedes is now a Tiger. Of course, Miguel Cabrera. Offense not the problem for Detroit. They're going to score runs. They always do. Starting pitching not quite what it was with the absence of Max Scherzer. And one area that they know is a problem that they are trying to figure out a way to fix is their bullpen. Out of play again. Foul by Ian Kinsler. And count remains 2-2. Two and two. Well, through all those so-called problems, Tigers won 90 games last year and won their division. So you figure they're in good shape to have a shot to repeat, but the Central should be awfully tough in the American League again this year. There's a shot to left. And that's over the head of Johnny Gomes, and that'll bounce onto the firm. That'll be a double for Kinsler. That ball jumped. He can hit. Former Texas Ranger. It fouled off a couple of real good fastballs, and it's almost like, okay, maybe he's going to throw me something off speed. And he was all over that breaking ball. So Kinsler with the leadoff double. He's got five doubles this spring, and now the Tigers getting a long look at Jose Iglesias. Man, they got from the Red Sox, and Joe, he had an awful time last year with the injury bug. Now, just a weird set of circumstances that had to do with his lower legs, both of them. Micro fractures in the shin bone of both legs. He missed the entire 2014 season because of it. But declared 100% ready to go this year. He can play short, he can play third. And we talked with Dave Dombrowski, the Tigers GM, who's here in Orlando to watch Victor Martinez play. He said the only thing that's missing for this kid is timing, which is understandable. Missing a full year of action last year. Two balls, no strikes to Iglesias. Kinsler is hit safely in seven of eight and stands at second. And that one right there for a strike. Andy Fletcher, the home plate umpire today. Him up inside. Three balls and a strike. Miller was 10 and 9 last year. A 374 ERA. 
32 games, 31 starts. He did have one complete game shutout to his credit. Struck out 127 and 183 innings. Punted back to the mound. Miller throws to third, and Kinsler's out. So a bunt right back to Shelby Miller, and Kinsler makes the first out of third base. There's a break. Yeah, A.J. Brzezinski, I believe, was the guy yelling 3 3 3 3 right away. And you see the quick spin around by Shelby Miller, and a really good throw in the bag. So Iglesias at first, a nice round of applause for Victor Martinez. You talk about Miguel Cabrera and Victor Martinez, the one-two punch for the Tigers lineup. Everyone knows about the pedigree of Miguel Cabrera. I think this man is overshadowed as a big league hitter. Last year, he hit 335, 32 homers, 107 knocked in. He had 32 doubles, and Joey struck out 42 times. 42. 42 for the year. And he has said his knee feels great. Victor lives here in the Orlando area in the offseason. But everybody in Tiger country was obviously very concerned about the availability of Victor Martinez for the opening bell. Yeah, he heard it working out before coming to camp, and they had to repair the meniscus. So that's why he's just getting started today. Runner goes. Krasinski's throw is... Target. Iglesias with a stolen base. Second of the spring for him. He got a good jump. So they get that runner back into scoring position. Well, this is where Victor Martinez makes his money. Runner in scoring position, one out. Think about it. How many RBIs? 107? 103. 103? Yeah. Now, granted, he's going to drive in Miguel Cabrera quite a bit, but think about how many base runners all of a sudden are not out there because Cabrera drove him in, and he yeah. usually bats behind Cabrera. Yeah, 32 of them were himself. Yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but still, yeah, I mean, that's... Pick your poison when you play the Tigers. Those two guys in the order. One and two. And he was late for the 94-mile-an-hour fastball. Strikeout number one for Miller. Good line of heat from Shelby. I guess the guy you just said is tough to fan. Good fastball. Ran away. Probably a two seamer that he was trying to get some movement on. The other part of that equation for both Victor Martinez and Miguel Cabrera, they're not exactly playing in a bandbox, are they? No. That Big is a ballpark, especially in right center and center. So two outs for Tyler Collins. He's the Tigers left fielder out of Baylor. Sixth round pick four years ago. He takes a ball outside, one ball, no strikes. Homer, seven RBIs for Collins this spring. split their split squad games yesterday the Braves lost in the ninth inning against the Cardinals in Jupiter yesterday but they were very pleased with the outing of Chin Ming Wong who pitched very well he gave up three hits in four and two thirds innings and how about Jace Peterson a couple of hits against yeah. Wainwright yesterday yeah. Jace not playing today because somebody stepped on his right hand the other day when he's playing second and broke part of the pinky finger fingernail. So they cleaned that up today and it's all taped up. So I doubt that we'll see him. He said he'd be ready to go tomorrow. 
Out of play, two balls, two strikes here in Orlando yesterday. If you watched our broadcast, and shame on you if you didn't. Yeah, Eric Stoltz pitched and pitched well over his five innings. So the last two days, Wandy Rodriguez, Stoltz, and Chin Ming Wong all pitched very well. And those three men vying for two spots at the back end of the Braves rotation. Low for count to Collins. With Iglesias at second base, two outs here in the first. Pitch number 21 for Miller. And it was a good one. Collins down on strikes. Miller pitches around a leadoff double. The Braves come a calling in the bottom of our first. Here's how Freddy Gonzalez lines up his Braves today against the Tigers. Yuri Perez leads off. Kayaspo, Kelly Johnson starting at first base. Johnny Gomes, A.J. Przinski back in harness behind the plate. Todd Cunningham still in the running for an outfield job. Siriaco, Phil Gosselin, and Shelby Miller. The Tigers are using the D.H. for Victor Martinez. The Braves are having their pitchers hit in today's game. And Kyle Lobstein is the pitching opponent. Kyle Lobstein, a guy who made a couple of starts a few starts for the Tigers at the end of last season when they desperately needed somebody to step in and give him some innings and he did and and pitched pretty well made six starts for him out of Flagstaff Arizona originally in the Tampa Bay organization but a tall lanky guy who relies on some finesse he's got a good cutter slider change up and a curveball that he says he's still kind of working on. Fastball is pretty much in the 87 to 90 range. That's where that first pitch was. And it was a strike to Yuri Perez, who's at 290 on the spring. Yuri's in right for Atlanta today. And another strike. Lots of jobs still available on this Braves ball club with about two weeks to go. Outfield jobs, infield jobs, bullpen jobs, bench jobs. I mean, really, every facet of the ball club, there's an opportunity for someone. Maybe the most openings I can remember. Really? Yeah, in a very long time. Strike three inside corner. Lobstein in and out, up and down to him to death, and at it back. Good pitch. Worked him away, away, and then ran one inside. Good pitch. He's vying for a spot in the rotation for the Tigers. Instead of being a bullpen spot starter guy, he could fill a spot for them if he finishes well with the 
into spring training. A strike to Alberto Cayaspo. He's knocked in four runs on the spring. Well, the Tigers have a pretty good idea who their top four will be. David Price will be the opening day starter. Will not be Justin Verlander, who I think deserves a huge tip of the cap. When that decision was announced, he said, I didn't earn it. The kind of year that Verlander had last year. And you've got Braves ne nemesis Anibal Sanchez and Alfredo Simon. Those are the top four for the Tigers. Pretty salty. It is, even in the with the absence of Max Scherzer. Who, as we know now, is a Washington National. So maybe Lobstein will be their fifth guy. He's had a good spring. He's pitching well so far today. And a shot toward Iglesias. Handles that chance easily for the second out. Busy broadcast, as always, during the spring. There's one of the newest members of Freddy Gonzalez's staff, Cole Porter, is the Braves' new third base coach. And he is wearing a microphone today. So we'll get some sounds of the game from Bo Porter, whom we hope will be busy against Detroit today. Yeah, we hope he's, all of his conversations are not with the umpire or the third baseman. Maybe get a teammate or two over there. Kiaspo and Kelly Johnson, who's up there now, batting back-to-back -to -back today. They have both really had a good week. Since we've been here, they're both swinging the bat a lot better. Here with us yesterday, you saw Kelly nail one to deep left center. Good sign for him when he's driving the ball that way. You saw those numbers for Kelly Johnson. He had a Johnny Cash year, the I've been everywhere man year. <laughs> he's played every team in the East the last couple of years in the American League. Takes that one up the middle, and that will sneak through. Kinsler pulled up with Iglesias charging in as the Tiger shortstop. And Kelly Johnson with a hit against the lefty. It comes with two outs. The old adage of a seeing-eye hit, you pretty much know what that is. But when the shortstop and second baseman look up because they don't want to bump heads, you know that was perfectly placed. So Kelly's good week continues here in the first. Johnny Gomes, the batter. Johnny at 147 for the spring, six driven in. Two of them came yesterday. <laughs> Jammed him and it's popped up. In the shallow left. Collins can't find it. Now he does, and he can't hang on. Kelly Johnson around third. Here comes the throw to the plate. And it short hops the catcher, and on his way to third is Gomes. He lost it. He found it. And then Collins couldn't hang on. The Braves score the first run of the game. And that's why you don't half step put two outs and just go through the motions running the bases balls hit You never know somebody might drop it somebody might lose it in the Sun And Kelly Johnson was hustling around the bases and able to score as a result How in the world is a guy from Baylor little was a fly ball in the Sun? <laughs> But he did. And Gomes gets an RBI. It's 1-0 for A.J. Perzinski. Well, he's been an Iron Man behind the plate the last couple days, hasn't he? You ever been to Waco? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, he has. He's played, he's played a lot of innings. Christian Bethencourt's had a flu bug, a fever, the last couple of days. And he's been out of action as a result. So A.J. back in harness today. John Buck had another good day yesterday. He was catching and playing first over in Jupiter. Continues to swing the bat well. Foul at first. And nothing to two. The Tigers in the postseason last year, I mean, they won their division for the fourth straight year, and they, they drew the Orioles 
uh, who won the East going away. And I think most people, me included, thought that the Tigers had to be favored because of their good pitching. And their, the first three were Scherzer, Verlander, and then David Price. And lo and behold, the Orioles sweep them, mostly because of the Tigers' bullpen. Yeah, you did that series. Yeah. It, 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 was it hard to watch, quite frankly? It was a little bit sad because it was almost like Brad Osmus didn't want to point that way. You know, he's like slapping his arm. But you have to go went, down there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and no matter who they brought in, they were getting lit up. So they've got that part of their game, their team, that they've got a remedy. Yeah, Joe Nathan and Joaquin Soria, I guess, are options A and B in whichever order you want to use them for the Tigers for the ninth inning. Mm -hmm. Will that be good enough? Remains to be seen. Nathan has got a 5.40 ERA this spring. Opponents hitting 0.63 against Soria. Well, they've both been good in the past for different ball clubs. They just weren't good for the Tigers at the end of the year last year, and they must have a lot of confidence. The Tigers must have a lot of confidence in those two because they haven't brought anyone else in of any note. Full count for A.J. Przinski. Another chance for Collins in left. He's got this one tracked down, and he makes the catch backpedaling to the warning track. Braves get a, a sun ball, and it leads to the game's first run and an RBI for Johnny Gomes. Site for Sore Eyes Braves fans. That's Nick Markakis in the cage. Live batting practice. And can't wait to see this man in game action here in Orlando. And hopefully by opening day down in Miami on April the 6th. And there is the man of the hour. Welcome to Atlanta, Nick. Thanks, guys. How's that feeling in the cage? Uh, it's coming along quick. Uh, quicker than I thought. Um, you know how the first day of BP goes. Feels like you've never even been in the batter's box. But... Uh, you know, everything's come along smoothly so far. Got a lot of family and friends in Georgia. Did that play a part of your decision to come to the Braves? Um, I just think the overall uh, Atlanta Braves thing and, uh, you know, what they're about and, and how they go about their business played uh, a big part in it. Um, you know, having my family there and friends there helps. But uh, ultimately, I think, uh, you know, with the organization and the guys that they brought in and what they're doing here uh, was more appealing to me than anything came well, from Baltimore a place that has obviously the Orioles way of playing baseball right. and a great baseball tradition you get to step right into the Braves way of playing baseball albeit in a different league yeah it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be different but it's also gonna be exciting at the same time um, you know National League American League different styles of play and uh, you know I'm looking forward to it this is James McCann the Tigers catcher Miller missed outside, two balls and a strike. A player's timetable 
a lot of times Nick is a little different than the trainers or the doctors, but what do you foresee in the next couple of weeks? How, how quick do you think this will come around where you'll be able to be out there? Um, well, tomorrow I think I'm going to go down to Kissimmee and uh, get some get some at bats in as as a DH, and then uh, great, you know, hopefully turn around to, uh, on Tuesday and, and come back and, and try to get some some work out in right field, and then uh, you know go into the off day with a nice off day, and uh, you know two games under my belt. So uh, you know, looking forward to it, and uh, you know it's going to be fun. Shelby Miller walks McCann to start the second. Describe your game for fans in Atlanta who didn't follow the Orioles and didn't see you play a lot. How would you describe the way you play major league games? Um, no, I just I have fun. That's the biggest thing. Uh, you know, a lot of people say this is a kids game, and uh, you know it's a hard game. And uh, you know if you're not out there having fun doing it, it can be pretty miserable. And uh, you know I'm just gonna go out there. I'm gonna play every day. I'm gonna give everything I got on the field. And uh, you know, do the little things that add up to the big things. And, uh, you know, the, the biggest thing is just uh, have fun with my teammates and, uh, you know, try to help out any way you can. You had a hitting coach in Baltimore that Braves fans are familiar with, Jim Presley, good hitting coach in his own right. What have you discovered about Kevin Seitzer um, that you perhaps didn't know, or have you guys hit it off right away? Oh, he's great. Um, you know, every every hitting coach has their own, own styles and their own way of teaching. And, uh, you know, I think the biggest thing with Seitz, he uh, he understands it. He, uh, you know, he's a positive influence. You know, he's not a guy that's going to go out there and necessarily change things here and there. You know, everybody gets here on their own talent, and, uh, you know, they're here for a reason. And, uh, you know, he's a real positive guy. He uh, he listens, and, uh, you know, he, he does what he's supposed to do as a hitting coach, and he helps you out positively, and that's uh, I think that's the biggest thing. Nick, a lot has been made about the Braves clubhouse culture. This is a team that has a lot of young players that do have some major league seasons under their belts. But there's talk of, of you coming in, A.J. Brzezinski coming in, Johnny Gomes coming in, uh, and providing veteran leadership. What does leadership mean to you as a veteran player, and is that a difficult thing to try to accomplish when you're in your first year with a new ball club? Um, yes and no. Um, you know, you got to have veteran leadership. I've uh, I've been on teams where it's all young. I've been on teams with, um, you know, veteran leadership and, and, and a good group of uh, young guys. And uh, you know, I think the biggest thing is just getting that good mix. Um, you know, you need your young guys and you need your older guys. And uh, you know, to come together and play and, and learn together, I think that's the biggest thing. And uh, you know, hopefully we can do that here, and uh, it's going to be fun. Buck Showalter is a guy that um, is highly respected in the game, but also a guy who's also known to be a little bit of a, uh, a general, uh, certainly more than just a field general, but a guy that is kind of my way or the highway type. Uh, how about Freddie Gonzalez? Uh, what's, what have you discovered about him that you liked? Um, you know, from, from what I've seen so far, he, he's great. He's, uh, you know, he has one of the hardest jobs <laughs> in baseball and that's to uh, get 25 guys on the same page and and, and be successful and uh, you know the biggest thing is he, he he just allows us to to be big league players he uh, he trusts us we trust him and uh, you know I think you have to have that trust for from the players and, and from the coaches standpoint too it's uh, you know it's a long season and uh, you know you got to be on the same page and uh, you know, I think Freddie allows us to do that and uh, allows us to go out there and play with no added pressure. And, uh, you know, I think as a manager, that's what you need to do. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a long season, but, uh, you know, it's going to be fun. Andrew Romine takes a strike. We asked Johnny Gomes this question earlier in the week. You know, Freddie Freeman, when he's in a jovial mood, he likes to hug his teammates. Has he approached you for your first spring training hug yet? And if so, what was your reaction? Yeah, I, got, I think I might have got mine my first day. So oh, really? I, I got it out of the way quick. But, uh, <laughs> you know, he's, he's just a guy who's out here having fun. You know, he's a great, besides being a great player, he's a great teammate, great individual. And, uh, you know, those are the things you need throughout the course of a season. Um, you know, those are the type of players you want on your team. And, uh, you know, just from watching him and uh, from on the other side, it's, it, it's, it's fun to watch. Well, Nick, we're thrilled to death that you're here with us in Atlanta. Happy that you'll be in action tomorrow down at Kissimmee. Good luck in the DH role. Let's get ready for opening day, and we'll see you down in Miami. All right, thanks, guys. All thanks, right. Nick. Mark Kakis, Shelby Miller, a score of second. He leads by a run.
already has been. On the base, on the base, on the base. So our thanks to Bill Porter wearing the mic on the field today. He's our sounds of the game feature here in Orlando. And that run is the first and only run we've seen so far here in the second inning against the Tigers. Bo's a great guy. Boy, he's very, speaking of positive and energetic. He's a very, I'll say, motivational type guy. He's, you can hear him in the clubhouse talking to the guys. Right off the pitcher's backside. And on the deflection, Kinsler can't make the play. Todd Cunningham will reach. Let's check on Lobstein. That hit him flush. Scott Cunningham has a lot of people talking about him in camp now. Not that they weren't before, but in recent days, it's kind of like he's grown on everyone because he does everything right. He plays the outfield in the right way. He throws to the right bases. He might be defensively the best outfielder on the ball club right now. Uh, not including Nick Marcakis. And he's making contact and put the ball in play and getting some hits. And it's not wasted on a lot of people, including the conversation you were having with Bobby Cox before the game. Bobby Cox was raving about Todd Cunningham before the ball game. And that's one of the real interesting things about spring training. How many times have you seen it in the history of this game? A kid will come in and have a tremendous first two weeks. And then when the games start to get a little more important, the play slips and you never hear from them again or they start quietly and then just slowly build and gain momentum and steam and earn themselves a job maybe that's what's happening for Todd Cunningham here and as we said there is at least a couple of openings on this Braves roster in the outfield yeah. as it stands right now and he's a switch hitter he's got a good lead at first for Pedro Siriaco and Lobstein a strike. Well, you know Gomes is going to make the team. You figure Marcakis, if he's going to DH tomorrow, he should have enough time to get ready and be good to go on opening day. So that's two spots ostensibly in the outfield. Has Eric Young Jr. wrapped up a spot? I would say, I'd say if he hasn't, it's very close. So that's three. That means you need two more. And Freddy Gonzalez has talked about the possibility of having a super flexible type player. A guy that can play infield and outfield for one of, if not both of those outfield spots. As Cunningham goes, McCann's throw from his knees and Todd beat the rack. Boy, what a throw. Man, oh man. Because he got a good jump. He went on his first move, good crossover step. And McCann didn't even get to his feet. He threw it from his knees and he put it right on the money. But the right foot went around the glove, says Joe West. Look at that throw. Yep, good call, Joe. So Cunningham in scoring position. And an even count for Pedro Siriaco. He's got to be in the mix, too. Lays down a bunt. It's a beauty. There'll be only one play. High throw, and he beat the rack. Since we've been down here, Chip, we've seen more and more of this, and it's the execution has been almost 100% with guys moving runners over, getting them in from third base with less than two outs, and putting some runs on the board. Great job by Siriaco here. He wasn't bunting for a hit, but just to get that runner to third base. And he did that, but earned himself a hit. And they're at the corners for Phil Gosselin, who's also swinging a hot bat right now this spring. If the Braves can carry this type of approach into the season, Chip, I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun for us to watch, for the fans to watch. Uh, it's just a different brand of baseball and one that's exciting and hopefully successful 
Well, if you look back to last season, if memory serves, I think you and Rich Waltz were talking about this the other night. The two teams in baseball that hit the fewest home runs were the teams that ended up in the World Series. And I'm not saying the Braves are going to do what the Giants and Royals did last year, but it's certainly possible. Shows there's a different way to win instead of sitting back waiting for three run homers every night. One ball, no strikes for Gosselin. And he takes outside. And, and this is one of those situations. Nobody out. First and third. Infield's playing for two. So e even if you hit into a double play, you get the run in. So that's what Phil, I'm sure, has on his mind. He's got the count in his favor. He might be thinking about the hole on the right side. To just try to hit the ball on the ground somewhere. Get that runner in. Good pitch at the knees, two and one. And for a club that doesn't figure to have a lot of 20 home run guys, those little things will add up to big things over the course of the season for this offense. Yeah, it's not like they're not going to hit any homers. They are. But they're not going to be among the league leaders you wouldn't expect. Talking about the Tigers bullpen, the thing about the Braves bullpen at the end, it's so strong that these hitters know that if they can give the bullpen the lead in the sixth or seventh inning, they got a real good chance of winning a ball game. A flare to center. Caught. There's the tag. Here comes the throw. It's up the first base line. McCann will fire the second as short hops to Glacius, and all hands are safe. Gosselin makes contact, and on the bad throw from Anthony Ghost, Siriaco moves up to second base, and it's a 2 nothing Atlanta game. Put pressure on the defense. With the runner tagging to score from third base, Ghost unleashes a, a bad throw, overthrows the cutoff man, so the Braves took advantage. And while maybe a good throw from the catcher gets him, it wasn't a good throw. It just pressure on the defense to make the right play by being aggressive on the base paths. Well done. And now Miller has a chance to get Siriaco into scoring position. I think at times we would agree that where's the pitch? The Braves pitching staff as a whole was not a very good bunting staff last year. Would you agree with that? No, oh, absolutely. Bordered on awful. <laughs> They're going to have to be better. I mean, this year. Yeah, and this might, in a normal regular season game, they might let him swing away. No reason to need or need to bunt him to third, but this is good practice. He got it down. And McCann will make the peg to first. All right, good work, Shelby. Yeah. Miller. You can give up the out, but that's yeah. a game situation for the pitcher. Yeah, it's just uh, it's just good practice. Regular season, doubt that that would happen to get a runner over to third base with two out now. But uh, well done by Shelby because the hitters have, I mean, the pitchers have just started hitting. Right, that was probably his first opportunity of the spring to do that. So runner at third, two outs for Yuri Perez. He struck out looking to start the game. RBIs today for Gomes and Gosselin. Kinsler at second gets the Sunday hop and the peg to first in plenty of time. Lobstein got hit with a batted ball and it cost him his second run. Shelby Miller and the Braves are up two after two.
presented by the Yellowwood brand. Joe and Chip with you from Disney. Want to welcome our friends watching from Detroit today. This game is being carried on the Tigers Regional Sports Network. And for you fans in Motor City, let's update you on who's in defensively for Atlanta. Johnny Combs, Todd Cunningham, Yuri Perez in the outfield, Kaiaspo, Siriaco, Gosselin, and Kelly Johnson around the infield. And A.J. Brzezinski, they know all about him in Detroit. Yeah, and we wish you well on your season opener against the Twins at home at Comerica Park. We'll be in Miami. So take that. So we wish you well. <laughs> yes, go, go get them. We hope you have a good day. Anthony Ghost down the left field line. That's going to get to the fence. And Ghost is going to have an extra base hit to lead off the Tigers' third inning. He's had a good spring. He has. Very good spring. That's already his 14th hit this spring. Came in hitting 342. That's his fourth double to go with three triples. I think he's a guy ideally suited for that ballpark. Yeah. yeah. So Kinsler with an RBI chance. He doubled to start the game against Miller. Shelby did a good job of pitching around that after Iglesias tried to bump Kinsler over. Shelby with a nice play to throw out Kinsler at third. And that's in the dirt. One ball, no strikes for Kinsler. We won't see the Tigers this year in regular season play. The Braves interleague opponents will come from the American League East. But uh, I have a great deal of respect and admiration for Mike Illich, the Tigers owner, Dave Dombrowski, one of the really good guys in the game. I hope they have another terrific year this year. I think it's going to be tougher in the American League Central. But you can't pick against these guys. No, I'm sorry, we're not going back to Detroit. Love Comerica Park. And those fans, boy, they packed that place. Well, they should. I mean, they've, they've had a great yeah. product to, to enjoy. And Kind of nice going to the ballpark knowing your team's going to score nine runs that day. <laughs> yeah, right. One ball, one strike. But a Hall of Fame player in Miguel Cabrera. And Victor Martinez, magnificent year last year. And there are folks who think the Tigers will be just as powerful, even though they've lost Rick Porcello, Torrey Hunter, and Max Scherzer in the offseason. What does that tell you? The bottom line, that average on base and slugging will carry a lot, no matter who's on the mound. One ball, two strikes. For Ian Kinsler. And he pokes that one foul. Yeah, if you have a nine-run lead in the ninth inning, who cares who closes? Yeah. No, I hope Verlander's good, too, because yeah. he struggled a little bit last year. Wasn't quite himself. Um, as durable as he has been the last several years. You know, it looked like maybe he lost a little bit on his fastball. I just hope he's 100% because the game needs him to be right. I, for one, am glad we don't have to see Anibal Sanchez. Remember we saw him in Detroit yeah. a couple years ago? Yeah. All he did was strike out 17 Braves in the sleet at Comerica Park. That was not a fun day. Yeah, it seems to me that was right near the end of a road trip, too. We'd already made stops in two or three other cities, so that just kind of put a capper on it. I think that was the infamous Iditarod road trip. Yes, it was. The, the all-northern cities in yes. early April road trip. Uh -huh. It was just brutal cold weather. I'm just trying to find any excuse I can for. <laughs> yeah, our hands Annabelle were again. Hands were numb. Doing it. <laughs> Boy, is he a good pitcher, though. As Kinsler ready for his sixth pitch against Miller. Shelby's thrown a good number here in the first couple of innings. Hadn't gotten the leadoff man in any of his first three yet. This guy's fun to watch, Kinsler. Put together a lot of good years offensively. He surprised me too at how good a second baseman he is too, because most of what you heard about him when he was with Texas was just his offense, which was notable. 
But just like this at bat, he started off trying to get that runner to third base. Said a lot of foul balls down toward Allen Trammell coaching at first. It's tough out. That's in the dirt. Alan Trammell. How in the world is he not in the Hall of Fame? You played against him, didn't you? What a player. Ian Lou Whitaker. Outstanding defensive double play combo for the Tigers for so many years. If they put combos in, you know, if they put the greatness of those two guys together, it would warrant being in Cooperstown because they were so great. Allen, another tremendous resource for guys like you and me. You can walk up to him and ask him anything about your team. He'll tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yeah. He's seen it all. One of the really good guys in the game. And it just seems right that he's wearing the Tiger colors once again. Absolutely. That's where he belongs. Two balls, two strikes for Ian Kinsler. Deliberate pace for Shelby Miller and the Braves who are up 2-0. And he got his man. Won that battle. There was some sync to that pitch. I think it was. I mean, that was 95. And typically, with a two-seamer, you're going to lose a, a couple miles an hour on your fastball. But, man, oh, man. Shelby's cutting it loose. He was a little reluctant. Some might even say stubborn to kind of go to that two-seamer and, and use it because I'm not going to say that he didn't think he needed it, but didn't want to try stuff in the middle of the season. But boy, at the, at the midway park of the season, things weren't going his way and became more receptive. Nice pick at third. Hooks the runner back. The pick to first. Nice effort by Kiaspo at the hot corner to get Iglesias for the second out. That's a tough pick by the man who I love to say his name, Alberto Callaspo. He played second yesterday. He's playing third today. Kelly Johnson played right field two days ago, played second some yesterday, and now he's at first. We talked about that yesterday. This, in Freddie Gonzalez's mind, might be the most flexible roster he has ever had potentially in the big leagues the number of men who can play multiple positions hit multiple spots in the batting order in the case of a Todd Cunningham a guy that can play a couple of outfield positions and switch hit for you as Victor Martinez gets his second at bat of the spring he struck out his first time up and that's Big news, as we told you, he struck out just 42 times all year last year in the big leagues. I don't know that I knew that, or I certainly didn't remember it from the postseason series, but in this day and age, that's, yeah. that's an amazing stat. Yeah, great year last year. The Tigers rewarded him with a new four-year contract. That's why they were all so concerned about the knee. If he, could, if he couldn't go, where do you go to replace that bat, and where do those dollars come from, even for the deep pockets of Mike Illich in Detroit? Well, but that's one of the great things about the DH in the American League. If you've got a player like Victor Martinez, who is well beyond his catching days, he might be able to go out to first base for a few games here and there. But the key is if the guy's healthy. You know him hit. If he stays healthy, and that was the concern with the knee. That ball's hit sharply to first. Kelly Johnson's got it. And Shelby Miller pitches around and lead off. Two nothing Atlanta, home third. John Scholz will join us. Lots to talk about with him after this. At Weingart's, our family.
Good job. First and third now. Go on the ground, tag on the fly ball. Tag up. You're scoring. You're scoring. Score! Great job, Surrey. That's Bill Porter sounds of the game. John Schuholtz joins us here in Orlando. This is a very enthusiastic staff, and Bo Porter's a new member of it. That's got to make you feel good to hear. Yep, uh, the whole, the entire environment here uh, this spring has been enthusiastic, upbeat. Uh, everybody from the staff, uh, front office staff, to the uniform staff, players, uh, everyone in the organization is very, very positive, very upbeat, and, and have good feelings about what's going on here with the Braves. I know you've been uh, having to make a trip or two back to Atlanta and places because of uh, what's going on with the new SunTrust field. Tell us about uh, the status, where that is, what's going on. Well, it's an amazing part. project that continues to grow uh, in excitement and, and, and possibilities for all of us with each and every day that turns. Uh, new developments, we made the great Comcast announcement last Tuesday, and, and, and that was a wonderfully uh, beneficial uh, and motivational announcement for all of us. We really feel good about that. We know that this is going to be a high-class project and a, an announcement like that with a company like Comcast taking over our entire office building and being one of the uh, one of the top sponsors in our program and in this project uh, speaks to that. This is a high-quality project that we are putting forward. Last, uh, just before the end of the season, you made the decision to bring John Hart aboard as president of baseball operations. At least from the outside looking at it, it looked like that was going to be something you really had to lean on him to get him to agree to do, but it, you finally got it done. John, John likes to remind me that he was in the happy place in his life, as he <laughs> called it, and, and he had earned that. I mean, he was a general manager for 18 years, a very successful one, and was on the MLB network and doing a great job, and we all loved to watch him because he gave us that perspective of management uh, in, in the analysis of, uh, that he brought forward. But uh, he was the guy that I felt like would be the perfect guy to bring in here to, to get our organization turned in a fashion that we all want it, where everybody's pulling in the same direction. Everybody knows uh, what to be expected every day and do it with an upbeat and positive attitude. Uh, there's been a lot of enthusiasm around that from everyone in this camp, everybody in the clubhouse, everybody in the dugout, everybody in the front office has that euphoric and positive feeling, and it starts with John's leadership. Base on balls for Kelly Johnson is aboard with one out. Johnny Gomes will be the batter. Joe made a point the other day, John, that I thought is one worth mentioning. Roy Clark's back. How important has that been for this organization? Well, actually, actually, when we decided to make a leadership change in September, uh, Roy Clark was the first call that I made. And, uh, and Roy and I have been in communication with each other over the years as professionals. And I always wanted to see what we could do to get him back. And he wanted to come back. And so that call lasted 10 seconds, maybe 15. He said, I'm back. And he wanted to be here, and he's here, and he's a great guy. And Brian Bridges, our new scouting director, will benefit so mightily by having someone of, of Roy's great, great magnitude of judgment and experience and understanding of the scouting process, helping him grow as a scouting director. And you talk about the use of the term grow. The Braves baseball operations system is growing. The baseball information system is growing. That's such an integral part in evaluating players and contracts and how to put together your team. That has changed as well for the better, it appears. No, it has. I mean, there's a lot of data. There's a lot of information that has to be analyzed and evaluated and processed and, and sent forward to John Hart so he can make great judgments. He and John Capalella, uh, our assistant uh, general manager. And so we have added, we've expanded, uh, we've modernized, and, and we continue to do that to stay at the cutting edge of our industry. This is Johnny Gomes, who hits with a man aboard. Two strikes. Kyle Lobstein for the Tigers. And back to the screen out of play. As the uh, gatekeeper, I'll say, wherever the team is right now, payroll-wise, John, if something came along deal-wise, is there some room there in the budget to expand that a little bit if need be? Sure. I mean, you always plan for that. You have to plan for eventualities in any budget you do, no matter what level you start with. Uh, a, a contingency is built in if there's an opportunity to acquire the player that you feel gives you an opportunity to win or that you need to uh, replace an injured player. You have that mobility and flexibility, and uh, that's built in on an annual basis for us. Uh, and, you know, if we need it, we, can, we have it to spend. Well, you did last year. You had to do it in spring training right away. 
with Urban Santana coming aboard. Exactly. Exactly. Good. That's a, he's got a perfect example. We've talked a lot, John, about the change in the cl clubhouse culture for the ball club. The last two guys that have hit, Johnny Gomes and now A.J. Brzezinski, they have certainly added a different dynamic to the 25-man uh, roster for this team. They have, and so too is Jason Grilly on the pitching pitching side of, of the roster. Uh, these are veteran guys, winners all, uh, with, with competitive spirits and a will to win and a will to work hard to win. And just by going about their jobs on an everyday basis are setting a great example for these young guys that are watching them every day. We've got more to talk about. Can you stick around for the half inning? Indeed, I can. We good. We need the help. It's 2 nothing Atlanta as we head to the fourth inning in Orlando. Braves lead off luncheon Monday, April 13th in the 755 Club at Turner Field. Have lunch with your favorite players, coaches, and executives. Space is limited. Visit Braves.com slash leadoff now to reserve your seat. And John, I know that's always one of your favorite dates of the home schedule, the leadoff luncheon, where there's so much excitement surrounding the ball club and everybody gets to meet and greet and talk about it. You're, you're right, Chip. Every year for me, it's exciting. It's the it's start of a new year, start with a new team, a new mix. The fans are as excited or more excited even than we are. Uh, to present our team they want to meet them and, and get familiar with them and uh, and this year especially with all of the many changes that were made uh, to our roster and to uh, our leadership philosophy and all of that I think the fans are really going to be excited about that luncheon this year this is Tyler Collins for the Tigers and Miller misses downstairs you and I were talking before the game this is a very big milestone year for you on a number of fronts right you, you were talking about a set of numbers this season yeah. for John Scherholz personally yeah this is my 75 50 25 year <laughs> uh, Lord Lord willing on October the 1st I'll be 75 years old uh, I am now in my 50th year as a major league baseball executive and my 25th year with the Braves so that's 75 50 25 year my family and I are going to find a way to celebrate it and enjoy it. How about a parade in October down Peachtree Street? That, that would be the very best way that I could <laughs> think of. But uh, short of that, we've still got some other plans we've made. Now, we were also talking about 1991 with the Braves. Do you see any parallels between the 2015 Braves and the 1990 to 91 Atlanta organization when you first got here? Well, with respect to the expectations in 1990 for the 1991 Braves and with respect to the expectations this winter for the 2015 Braves, that is similar. There, there, there's not much high expectation either in the industry or in the media or among some of our fans. A lot of our, our fans are with us uh, come hell or high water, and that's great. That's what we love about our Atlanta Braves fans. But that that's similar. And, and there's an attitude that I sense around the batting cage and in the clubhouse that I sense in the spring of 1991 when Terry Pendleton, our first base coach now, then a player walked up to me and he whispered in my ear. He said, John, we're going to have a lot of fun around here this year. And I feel the same is true about this team. They're going to play the game right. They're going to play the game hard. It's going to be an exciting team to watch. It's a different team to watch. And we're going to play baseball with a winning spirit. And I think the fans will really like that. And one guy's going to be a big part of it is on the mound right now. He's been impressive today. And what a good arm. 
Shelby yeah, Miller. That was a that was one of the first big deal that John Hart and John Coppolella made uh, to put the roster, reconstruct the roster. We traded Jason Hayward, which was very, very difficult for all of us to do, but we had to start building back our starting pitching, and we thought we could get a guy like this and Terrell Jenkins, the second player we got back from the Cardinals, and and and, uh, and they have both been stellar so far this spring. That's James McCann, and he skies one toward left. Johnny Gomes will have plenty of room. There's the second out. And as you know, the lifeblood of this organization has always been its farm system. We were also talking about how rapidly John and John and you have been able to turn over the talent level in the Braves minor league system, going from one of the weakest systems to one of the strongest almost overnight. That's true. And John Hart and John Coppolella and the scouts in our organization and the many people who work side by side to make those decisions deserve an awful lot of credit. Our farm system had not been evaluated very highly, in fact, towards the low end of Major League Baseball. Uh, and in rapid fire fashion with uh, three big trades, uh, we've replenished that farm system. We're now ranked fifth or sixth in the industry with the acquisition of those young men we got in, in return for the players we traded. And we're on our way. We've reset as we wanted to. We've got a good foothold to move forward in a, in a very positive and successful manner over the next many years. And one of those guys already has made a mark here in spring training, and Jace Peterson, who everybody loves and is raving about because he's such a solid baseball player. Isn't that a great story, Joe? Jace yeah. Peterson was one of several players we acquired from San Diego, and uh, and he had played a variety of positions uh, up through the minor leagues and at the, briefly in the major leagues, and we brought him in here. But, wow, he came in, took the opportunity by the horns, uh, played almost every game in a, in a row for the first 10 or 12 has shown with his ability he can run he can defend he's an aggressive player he's an old football defensive back and he's got that kind of attitude about him and he's really been not one of the great highlights of our camp so already some fruits from some of those deals to get prospects and he's certainly more than that he is more than that now he's uh, he's really in the battle for a, a, a big a big role in our club a ball and two strikes for Aaron Westlake of the Tigers. Shelby Miller looking for an easy inning. And Westlake skies one out of play. Jose Peraza didn't make the club. He's down in the minor league camp, but everyone still loves his future with this Braves organization. Absolutely. He's a bright, bright star of the future. Uh, he, he was a bit, I'll say, he wasn't overwhelmed. He, he went about his job. He played hard. He did everything he, you expect him to do. He's got great skills and great talent and a great future in he, ahead of him. And he's going to be a real impact player for the Atlanta Braves sooner than later. And when he makes his mark here, he's going to be a real exciting player. He's, he can steal 60, 70 bases a year. We worked him out in center field a little bit because he's so athletic and he has that great speed. And that's happened to many, many players who started out as infielders and became outfielders in their major league careers. But he's he's certainly uh, high on, on on all of our minds in terms of future uh, baseball ability and helping us win championships back here in Atlanta. And to that point, the name Ron Gant comes to mind immediately. I don't think Peraz is going to hit 30 home runs like Ron Gant, but Ronnie could run in his day, too. That's right. Ron, the old second baseman, became an outfielder and a real power hitter and run producer for us and was right in the middle of our great 14-year run for a long, long time. Well, these are certainly different times, but they're exciting times to be a Braves fan, I think. They, they really are, and I think the fans were gonna, are going to get excited quickly. Uh, if they were here this spring or if they watched our team, uh, they, they can see how this, these guys are playing the game, how they're busting their butts every play. Even the guys that come in late in the game and, and finish off the game, the young guys, the, the veteran guys, or the, or the guys battling for positions on the club. There's a real, real uh, spirit of, of, of competitiveness and will to win and desire to do what it takes to win games every game they play. That went right back where it came from. Good at that by Westlake. Right through the legs of Shelby Miller. And he's got a two-out hit here in the tight fourth. I like the attitude and the, the comments guys have made when anytime somebody brings up the word rebuilding, you know or rebooting they're taking it personally they is like hey don't talk about rebuilding to us we're here to win we want to win we think we got a good chance to win yeah and especially uh the guys who came in the veterans we brought in johnny gobbs and perzinski and i and i mentioned poor jason grilly i mean these guys have been around for a long time they they're not in any rebuilding process they want to get the strap it on and go play games and beat the guys they're playing and win a series and win the next series and win as many games as we can and we're not saying rebuilding Line to second, and that'll end the Tiger fourth. Reestablish ourselves in a manner which we're used to. Well, we're off to a great start, John Lovett. As Thank always, you. thanks for your time. Thank you. See opening Thank day you. down in Miami. John Schultz, we head to the home fourth.
the your Atlanta Braves take on the Mets Friday April 10th through Sunday April the 12th all fans in attendance on Friday and Saturday will get a 2015 magnetic schedule from Georgia Power experience the excitement of opening day with your Atlanta Braves get your tickets at braves.com slash tickets today Mets figure to be a better ball club this year although as we have spoken several times this spring the injury bug has really really hurt New York and then I just read about Daniel Murphy may not be active opening day because of a hamstring. So Zach Wheeler's out. Josh Edgen is out. They're still without Bobby Parnell. But they've got Matt Harvey back. And I would assume that the Braves would get a look at Matt Harvey in that series in Atlanta. I think the Braves and Mets, but that's the second series of the year. So, yeah, we would see him in the maybe the final game of that three-game set. Right. Todd Cunningham skies one toward left. Collins makes the catch near the line for the first out. So Cunningham's one for two. He's the first out of the home fourth. And Pedro Siriaco is the batter. Siriaco was rewarded for trying to do the right thing at the plate. Was trying to advance a runner, laid down a bunt, and beat the pitcher's throw to first base and got a hit as a result. That bunt led to the Braves' second run. Phil Gosselin followed with a sacrifice fly. That was Pedro's 11th hit of the spring. He's had a good spring, and he's been used in the outfield some, too. Okay. Now, is his name is fun to pronounce as Alberto Callaspo. Pretty close. Siriaco. Callaspo. <laughs> Owen pitch. It is ripped foul. That's toward the Tiger dugout. Brad Osmus is the manager of the Tigers. Okay. Leland has moved into retirement. And Brad had the good fortune to inherit a club capable of winning 90 games last year, and that's exactly what they did. I heard good things from the players about Brad because it, it's a tough spot when you're hired to move into a job where you're expected to win. Hey, this is a good ball club. Don't mess it up. Mm -hmm. That type of thing. But the players that I talked to at the end of last season all said he, he had done a great job and they really liked him. Fly ball down the right field line, curling toward the seats. And that is going to be caught by the right fielder Austin Romine. Off right. side of him, behind the stands, but he did make a nice play. Well, I would think that Brad Ausmus and Freddy Gonzalez would have a lot to talk about with that. Replacing legendary managers with good ball clubs and obviously the high expectations and the inevitable comparisons. Yeah, they, and uh, Brad Ausmus played a long time in the big leagues. He caught a lot of pitchers, caught a lot of games, hit a huge home run against the Braves in the postseason that we don't like to remember, but hard to forget. Off of Kyle Farnsworth at Minute Maid Park. So Phil Gosselin with two outs. Our first look at Kyle Lobstein. Pretty effective. Yeah, his defense hasn't helped him much. Left fielder losing the ball in the sun. I can't, can't blame him for that. And then he was a little slow getting to that bunt that Siriaco put down. Well, he's already pitched his longest outing of the spring so far. His longest was his last outing of three innings. He's an out away from pitching four. He just walked Gosselin. That is his second walk in as many innings today. But he's got the pitcher coming up, Shelby Miller. He won't have that luxury in the American League. But he's done a good job of moving the ball around, changing speeds, which is what we expected to see from him today. Pretty good cut. And into the bleachers to the right. Strike one for Shelby Miller.
Almost the same spot. And a man from Flint, Michigan came up with that souvenir. You see him in the orange shirt down yeah, the right field line. Oh, two. Good for him. Get out of the cold weather and come south. Gossel in good lead. Two strike pitch. And that was high to Miller. It's one ball, two strikes. You like hockey, Chip? Love hockey. St. Louis Blues, Stanley Cup champions to be. Yeah, that's a good logo, too, but that iconic logo of the Red Wings, tough to beat. Yeah. The Blues fans don't really like to talk about the Red Wings too much. I understand. However, you're right about the Red Wings. I kid Tommy Glavin all the time. I hate Bobby Orr. Hate him. Bobby Orr scored the Stanley Cup winning goal against the Blues back in the yeah. 1960s. And that mm -hmm. great iconic photo of him sure. cheering as he's laid out, laid out in front of the net. Bouncing ball foul. Two balls, two strikes. I think the Red Wings are getting a new arena, if I'm not mistaken. Downtown Detroit, the building, okay. brand new hockey only facility. Are they in the process of doing that? I think Mr. Illich owns that team too, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, I think you're right. Yes. So good for them. Yep. Shelby Miller's making Lobstein work. This is the seventh pitch of the at bat. And he took a call, third strike. To retired side. Couple of walks and a couple of strikeouts for Kyle Lobstein of his longest outing of the spring, and the Braves are beating him today, 2 zip. Second look at the Tigers, Joe, has gone a lot better than his first. Helped himself out with that good play. Got some good direction from A.J. Krasinski. Struck out a tough strikeout guy in Victor Martinez. He's had good stuff, and he's got a streak now working over his last two outings of eight straight shutout innings pitched. Going back to his start against the Red Sox, and that includes three walks and six strikeouts. And Romine slashes one down the left field line, and he'll have an extra base hit. Big turnaround second. He'll slam on the brakes. Boy, the Tigers have done a nice job today of getting the leadoff man on. That's four out of the first five innings. The first man is reached against Shelby Miller. And three of those were doubles.
One of those doubles was from the man in the batter's box, Anthony Ghost. Braves think he'll be bunting down 2 0. Kiaspo and Kelly Johnson at third and first creep in a step or two. They're both on the grass. Let's see what Ghost does. No bunt. Strike one. 93 94 all day. Shelby Miller, third in the National League Rookie of the Year voting in 2013 behind Jose Fernandez and Yasiel Puig of the Dodgers. Real interesting stat that I saw about him today. He's unbeaten in September. That's impressive. And we all hope the Braves will be playing very meaningful games in September this year. He's 26 and 18 in his young major league career. Ball at a strike for Ghosts. He's still pumping it up there at 95 miles an hour. And he's about to throw his 70th pitch. talking with John in between commercial breaks John Schultz about how easily the ball comes out of Shelby Miller's hands I mean it is a very very fluid smooth delivery isn't it, it? is and he really uses his lower half well drives off that back leg it's like one of those guys that takes a nice easy golf swing and the ball flies it, he's not having to put a whole lot of effort into it Out straight back. Great follow through to driving straight to the plate. Well, if you contemplate the possibilities for the Braves rotation, I'm assuming Julio Turan's going to get the ball for the Braves on opening day. You then have Alex Wood with his very quirky, funky, herky jerky type delivery. I assume you follow that with a Shelby Miller. And the way Wandy Rodriguez has pitched this spring. I would have to think he'd be the lead candidate for either the fourth or fifth spot, but let's just assume he slots into the fourth position in the Braves rotation. You really have four unique delivery styles of pitching, four different looks for opposing hitters to contemplate in a three-game series or in a six-game series. Yeah, and you go right, left, right, left. Right. So that's a nice thing, too. And yeah, Wandy's leading spring training both... Arizona and Florida in ERA. And five no-hit innings last time out against the Marlins, and he struck out Giancarlo Stanton twice. Goes to fly ball deep right. And that'll be playable for Yuri Perez. He backtracks, makes the grab. Productive out for Ghost. Romine will tag up and move to third with one out. And now Kinsler's the batter. Well, I would guess with the Braves signing Wandy Rodriguez to a minor league deal, Stoltz, Chin Ming Wong pitching the way they're pitching, I, I'll bet John Hart's phone's ringing. Yeah. Now, what do you plan to do with these guys? Are you going to keep them all? What do you, how are you going to use them? Because we have an interest. There's got to be some teams out there short on pitching that like what they've seen from all three. Here's Kinsler. And we haven't even talked about Fulton Evich who, like Miller and Tehran, throws hard, but of those three, he's got the hardest fastball, the most brisk fastball, I should say. Yeah, from another club standpoint, they know those two guys are not in the equation for them because they're either going to be on the big club or in, in Gwinnett. But uh, both Banuelos and Fultonevich pitched well their last time out. I think Fultonevich pitches again tomorrow. He does. That'll be against the Astros in Kissimmee as Kinsler drives one to right. Another chance for Perez. Runner will tag at third. Here comes the throw. It's a strong throw, but cut off. And the sacrifice fly plays the first Tigers run. It's now a 2-1 game. Oh, 
Those are easy pick and three in Kinsler. He's going to put it in play, and he did. And that's his ninth RBI, and the leadoff double turns into the first Tiger run. That's a lot of RBIs. Spring training, nine already. How about that kid with the Cubs, Bryant? Chris Bryant? Eight homers. He's got another homer in a B game that doesn't show up in the stat sheet. <laughs> We were joking with Kenny Craback, who's one of the Cubs advanced scouts. We said before the game, hey, if he can't make your team, we'll happily take him off your hands. <laughs> As uh, Iglesias bats and slashes one out of play. Thought process for the Cubs is start him in the minor leagues. You push back his arbitration clock and get another full year of service before you have to worry about that. Bryant's agent, Scott Boris, is livid. He wants him to make the opening day roster, and you can understand his thinking. Kids got more homers than anybody else. And it's played great for the Cubs. I don't think Mr. Boris would be the first agent upset that his client didn't make a big league team. But it may be news to him that he's not running the Cubs. In the dirt, two balls, two strikes. Cubs going to be awfully tough if everything goes right. Joe Madden, their new manager. John Lester, the top of their rotation. And all those young hitters getting ready to go for the Cubbies. Broken bat pop should be handled at second. And it is by... Gosselin. Nothing doing for us. Shouldn't say that. One run across for the Tigers. 2 1 as we head to the home fifth. Honda Lawn and Garden. 2-1 now. Atlanta has the lead. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Here's a thrill. Proud of Conyers, Georgia, and Georgia Tech. Buck Farmer is on to pitch for the Tigers. He'll follow Kyle Lobstein, who had four innings of four-hit, two-run ball. Farmer's out of Rockdale County High School. Three-year captain of the baseball team. He was originally drafted by the Braves in the 46th round in 2009. Didn't sign, went to college instead. Did Westlake pitcher of the year last year. And named the third best prospect in the Tiger system. Best pitching prospect. Made his big league debut last year, August 13th, against the Pirates. Five innings, four runs, six hits, four strikeouts. Face Yuri Perez, who starts the Braves fifth. Perez 0 for 2 with a strikeout. They'll be followed by Kayaspo and Kelly Johnson. And a line drive the other way, a base hit. So Perez 1 for 3 today. And here's Alberto Kayaspo. 
Like Kiespo, Perez in the mix for a job in spring training. A lot of names, a lot of people vying for some of those spots with the injury to Melvin Upton Jr. and of course the delayed start for Nick Marcakis. That's given everybody more at bats that had an idea of trying to make this club. And if you missed it, we had Nick on one of our microphones down at the dugout today, and he told us he'll be in the lineup tomorrow as the designated hitter for the Braves when they take on the Houston Astros in Kissimmee. Here's some of those names. Zoyo Almonte came from the Yankees. Cunningham was already in the organization. Kelly Johnson, part of the mix. Kiaspo with a rocket toward right center field. That gets down. Perez around second. He's on his way to third. The throw into second. And Kiaspo's out by 15 feet. Now it goes a single. Kiaspo's out number one, but Perez at third. It goes a single and maybe a little over aggressiveness on the part of Kiaspo expecting the throw to go somewhere else I guess but again he continues his good hitting one of the things about that list uh, for possible candidates as backup outfielders or platoon players is this guy Kelly Johnson because he's also listed among the candidates for the infield so I think if all goes according to plan and he keeps hitting the way he's been hitting especially He's going to be that super utility guy that swings both infield and outfield. No balls at a strike for Kelly Johnson. Does the fact that the organization knows Kelly so well factor into that final decision? Sure it does. I mean, but Kelly was part of the Baby Braves. Hard to believe that was 10 years ago. Yeah, but more, more importantly, what he's done over the last two or three years, I'll say, with different ball clubs. Uh, he's come off the bench and provided some pop for some ball clubs. He's acclimated to pinch hitting and being that utility guy. One ball, two strikes. Runner at third infield in for Kelly. Well, you know, he's obviously hoping to make this team but he's kept his home in Atlanta young children would be great for the kids to see dad play as a brave about two weeks that decision will be made if not sooner strike three farmer with a pretty pitch two out Boy, the cans gloves really pop it. This guy throws hard. Yeah, 94. Pretty stiff fastball. Got a little help from McCann on that, too. But too close to take. So Johnny Gomes will bat. Gomes with an RBI hit. That's three RBIs for Johnny in the last two games. That's good to see. delivers a strike. This is something you see a lot of in spring training. Teams will try to find a way for Detroit natives to play against the Tigers, Atlanta natives to play against the Braves if possible, if those players are on the roster. I'm sure Buck Farmer's family is watching the game today, hoping he'd pitch. And he's done a good job to this point. Slowing hard. One ball, one strike. at third with two out. And A.J. Przinski is waiting next. Well, Buck's got eight strikeouts in seven innings so far this spring. That's impressive, but his ERA is a little high because he has been touched for some runs. So he cut down on some base runners and keep adding to the strikeout list. I know he'd like that a lot better.
and he's trying to reel him in. He ought to see a pretty good pitch here. Three balls and a strike. Was on his way to first. Instead, it's a full count. That's pretty good tailing action on that fastball. Can't give up on it. See if anybody can make a play on the berm. Hey, the berm's come a long way. They've got their own little tents out there with beer and margaritas and baseball fair. You don't have to come out there and suffer. Down the left field line. Oh, that one bounced off the tent in the Tigers' bullpen. <laughs> Eight pitch at bat coming up for Gomes. Yeah, you can tell it's spring training. Pitchers are doing the wind sprints on the warning track after their day's work is done. Carl Lobstein and the Tigers strength coach getting a workout left. Popped up. And that one curled back onto the field of play. Nice play by Jeffrey Marte at third base to retire Gomes and Atlanta. We end of the sixth. The ball game, 2 1 Braves leader. Customized to meet your unique needs. You'll also get priority seating to SunTrust Park in 2017. Don't miss out on being an A-List member today. Go to Braves.com slash A-List or call 404-577-9100. There's our first look at Craig Kimbrell this spring. He has not been in many games. This is only his third appearance in uh, Grapefruit League action. As you look at his numbers from last year, season in which he saved 47 games started his big league career with 46 then 42 then 50 and last year 47 but he has pitched in some inner squad games some minor league games so it's not like he's not getting some work in just not any grapefruit league action to speak of well 
He'll be tested right away because Victor Martinez is up first. And this is Victor Martinez's first action of the spring. He is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Chops that one toward first. And Martinez will be retired on the flip to Kimbrell covering the bag. One pitch, one out. Great outing again for Shelby Miller. Five strong innings for him. Didn't give up a run until the fifth. Four hits. Joe Benson's taken over for Atlanta in left field for Johnny Gomes. Gomes finished his day 1 4 3 at the plate. Here's Tyler Collins. He has struck out twice. Lost fly ball in the sun in the first inning of play, and that led to the first Braves run. center and Todd Cunningham made it look easy there's out number two I'm sure the Tigers are looking at Craig Kimball with a great deal of envy with all the <laughs> talk we've made earlier in this ball game about their back end of the bullpen question marks that's the way games are managed now you worry about the ninth inning first if you get there if you've got a guy like Craig Kimball 47 out of 51 times you're going to win the game the Tigers do not have that luxury I think at the moment nor did they last year it appears no I, you're exactly right though it, that's such a luxury when you know you've got that guy now let me see where I fill in the other spots because that last guy is always hard to find a good one like Craig he has led since entering the league in 2010 he leads the majors in both saves and opportunities 186 out of 205 90.7 percent fourth best in major league history so put a guy like Craig Kimbrell in the Tiger bullpen with that offense what a juggernaut you'd have and I'm not saying the Braves could do that but that's what they are looking for in Detroit well, they blew 16 games last year. That was the number. And he blew, what was it, four? Yeah. Four point saves. Yeah. So, had, a, had double digit wins to their total, and they walk away from the Central. But more importantly, what happened in the playoffs, which you were exactly. on hand yeah. to see 11 earned runs allowed by the Tigers' bullpen in four and two thirds innings. Against the Baltimore Orioles. And he just struck out James McCann with a 97 mile an hour fastball. Greg Kimbrell with a 1 2 3 Atlanta sixth. It's a pretty good weapon.
Monday, April 6th. Watch your Atlanta Braves as they start the regular season in Miami against the Marlins. Coverage starts at 3 Eastern on Monday, April 6th, only on Sports South. Shelby Miller started the game today for the Braves. Five innings of one run ball. He's put on the headset down in the dugout. Shelby, thanks for joining us. Uh, progressively better, better, better each time out so far for you this spring. Yeah, um, it feels like it at least. You know, you, um, you know, coming off that first start was a little rough, and and uh, it's not too much harder to get better than that. But um, yeah, I feel like we've we've done a good job uh, going forward. Um, my arm feels good. Pitchers are getting sharper, and um, you know that's the only thing that matters right now. And and uh, you know, but other than that, I, f I feel good. Yeah, I think uh, that's pretty apparent, Shelby, with everybody across the board. Every time out, everybody seems to be getting a little bit better, but. Uh, until that run there last inning you had a real good streak going is there anything that you did from the first start to the last two that's a little different other than just settling in um nothing nothing that really stands out um you know a couple of things mechanically that are you know easy fixes that you, that you really don't get early on you know you, you, deeper into spring training you get the more comfortable you get uh, mechanically and and just working on you know the sinker and and uh, all my pitches just trying to get them over for strikes um, AJ and and uh, called a good game today and, and you know he's a good veteran catcher behind the plate who's, who's gonna come out there and, and let you know what you're doing wrong and he, you know he fixed me a couple times a day and um, you know it's just all about progress, progressing and getting better um, you know other than that uh, you know uh, you know th there's not much difference uh, b between me and last year is just uh, just trying to find ways to, get, to become a better pitcher well one of those ways uh, was the two seamer, but you didn't really start using that till maybe the second half of the season. Is that right? Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, uh, about the last seven starts, last okay. you know, a couple like ten starts uh, at the end of the season, I started mixing it in. Um, you know, AJ was catching me in Philadelphia one day, and um, you know, we literally went into the uh, get to, yeah, uh, went into the bullpen and and uh, you know started throwing the sinker and, and said if. If it uh, has any movement, if it's, you know, doing anything at all, we're going to try it. And that's what we did. And, and uh, you know, from there, I've been throwing it. And um, I think it's, uh, you know, going to be a huge pitch for me. It helped me a lot, uh, be more efficient. And, and uh, you know, that's what you want as a starting pitcher. So I'm always trying to find ways to get better and go deeper in games. A.J. Brzezinski. Boy, A.J. The pinch run for here after a, a sixth inning single. You make a good point, Shelby. You come to a new organization. Obviously, everything's new, but that's not totally the case for you because AJ was your catcher with the Cardinals last year at times. Yeah, uh, you know, towards the towards the end, um, you know, when uh, when Yachty got hurt, you know, AJ was catching every day uh, for the most part. Him and Cruz were kind of working in and out with each other, and but AJ was the main guy and. Uh, you know, he came in and did an excellent job. I mean, he helped me, uh, you know, tremendously with, uh, you know, not only, uh, you know, my pitches and stuff like that, but, um, you know, mentally. He's been around the game for, he's been in the big leagues for 15 years. It's a veteran that you that you want to have in the clubhouse. And, um, you know, he, he knows a lot of things. So he, he uh, he's a huge help behind the plate and uh, a great leader in the clubhouse. One of the guys that uh, we're proud of in this organization is Roger McDowell, and I'm sure you grown to like him as you've spent more time with him and he's one of those guys that's really good at teaching the sinker and probably enhanced it already yeah he's uh rogers rogers you know probably one of the best if not the best pitcher coach in the league um you know having somebody like that to work with every single day um is a huge benefit to, to us pitchers over here and um, you know, I, I love, uh, you know, just listening to, you know, the, the intelligence he has and, and uh, the game of baseball, how to pitch, and, and just the way he, uh, you know, helps uh, John Cunningham. Uh, helped us. Uh, in the right center. Helped, you know, he, he's just a huge help. So, oh, what Anthony Gross has played on the center field, I think. Yeah, he does. A good, good base running by Jose Constanza to swipe the bag and get to third. With respect to uh, your experience here in camp with the Braves, and you came from a great organization in St. Louis, uh, and I know they bring in some of their old greats uh, for spring training too, but what's that experience been like when, when you see Steve Avery and Tom Glavin and people like that walking around a clubhouse? Oh, it's, it's amazing. I mean, uh, you know, talking about uh, some, of the, some of the best players to play the game, and, and uh, you know, Tom's out there watching our bullpens and, and uh, you know, having him behind the plate and, and 
uh, while we're throwing bullpens is just, you know, you're kind of starstruck for a little bit. He's he's uh, <laughs> he's an amazing pitcher and a, and a great guy to just being around and pick his brain about, you know, how to pitch uh, just baseball in general. He's, he's a great guy that uh, you try to relate yourself after. And, and uh, you know, our, our goal is to get to the Hall of Fame and, and stuff like that. And that's a guy that's done it. And, um, you know, it, it's it's pretty. Uh, Pretty fun to have those kind of guys. Seriaco in the air to center. That's going to be deep enough to score a run. Ghost will put that in his pocket. Costanza will tag and score. And Shelby, we've talked about this a lot with the Braves this spring. This is not going to be a team that has four guys hitting 30 home runs a year. They're going to play or have to play a lot of ABC baseball. And you guys have done that today. As a pitcher, that's got to be rewarding to see an insurance run like that get tacked on here. I mean, absolutely. Uh, you know, there, there's, uh, you know, all the expectations and stuff like that 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 every baseball team has. And, and you know, some teams exceed the expectations. Some people don't live up to it. But at the same time, we know... Uh, we know what we have here. Uh, we have, uh, you know, got a lot of guys with heart, a lot of guys that are going to go out and, and play their hardest every single day, and, and that's what you want in a team. And um, I think that's exactly what we have over here, a lot of guys that just lay it all on the lines. And, uh, you know, it, it's just fun to be over here. I, I love it so much. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to, to a healthy, hopefully long uh, season in, in Atlanta. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what 2015 has in store for us. Well, Shelby, we appreciate your time, man. Great job today. Look forward to seeing you down in Miami. I'm guessing you'll get the ball in that first series against the Marlins. As you know, it's a big ballpark, fun place to pitch, and uh, always fun to face your eastern rivals down in Miami. Absolutely. Yeah, look forward to watching you pitch, kid. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Shelby Miller. Good start today for the Braves. Five innings of one run ball in Atlanta. Tax on another tally here in the sixth inning off right hander Al Albuquerque. 3 1 Atlanta. We head to the seventh. I don't even get a good look at this left here yeah. that lightens every load. Joe Simpson, Chip Carey, the rest of our Fox Sports nice staff are with you on in Orlando. Three to one Braves. Shelby Miller and Craig Kimbrell have worked on the mound today. This is Josh Outman who's trying to make the Braves bullpen. Atlanta has some opportunities for left handed relievers in the latter days of camp. A strike to Aaron Westlake. Josh got off to a good start in spring training. No runs, no hits in his first three appearances, but his last two have been a little rough. Last two innings, seven hits and three runs allowed, no walks or strikeouts. And that's not a good way to start. He hits Westlake with a pitched ball. It's amazing this spring 
how much trouble the Braves left-handed relievers have had in retiring left-handed hitters. And that continues here with a hit batsman to start the top of the seventh. He got him a little below the belt. Not one. Let's say not easy to shake off. Lake gingerly takes his lead from first as Jeffrey Marte hits and takes a ball. One ball, no strikes. Your point's a good one, though, Chip. It, it, Avilon, uh, Russell, Outman, one of those guys needs to step up, if not two of them, to show they can get some lefties out. And that was a problem for James Russell last year. He did a good job against right handers. Luis Avilon last year. Well, he didn't certainly didn't have a bad year. It was not quite there he had in 13, and he lost a little bit on his fastball. So there's a job there for the taking two. That's the bridge between the starters and the last three guys. Which figure to be in some order: Grilly and Johnson, and then Craig Kimball for the final three outs. Mm -hmm. Wholesale changes for the Braves defensively. We'll give you those in a second. As a 1 2 pitch is fouled at the plate and on the recoil, that got the helmet of Braden Schleyhuber, who's the New Atlanta catcher. Goodness, he had that helmet on. In here to left, Jose Costanza on his way to the wall, and that one's gone. Hit batsman and a home run has tied the game for the Tigers here in the seventh. That one right out over the plate. Great extension by Marte. Good effort by Jose, but out of his reach. So the Tigers have tied the game at three here in the seventh. Second homer of the spring for Marte. Andrew Romine, the batter, he's doubled and scored. Bottom part of the order for the Tigers has done most of their damage today. And a chopper to short. Big hop. Seriaco on a close play got him at first for out number one. So we know who three of the Braves relief pitchers will be really Johnson and Kimbrell. But here are the men competing for two maybe three of those jobs. Yeah maybe even four. Yeah, if you carry if you carry 12 pitchers yeah. five starters seven guys in the bullpen and uh, Wine Jaime had a real good outing here was it yesterday or the day before yesterday. Had a perfect inning, so that was a little better effort from him. Michael Kahn, the same thing. He gave up uh, a base runner, walked a base runner's first battery face, and then pitched out of it. But these lefties, these lefties are not getting it done right now. No. And go and back. You, one makes you wonder if the Braves would consider Manny Banuelos yep. as a relief option. I think their preference is that he would start, but. As you said, no one 
has really stepped up from the left side and taken command of one of those two, maybe three positions in relief yet. As Ghost bounces out for the second out of the seventh inning. And we'll see Kinsler for a fourth time. Well, I was just looking here. Luis Avilon's last three outings. It covers two and two-thirds innings, five hits, three runs, all earned, uh, one walk, and no strikeouts. Uh, James Russell, his last two outings, three and two-thirds innings, and really only that one that one outing against the Yankees that was pretty bad. Right. He, had, he said, I've been hit harder, but six hits, six runs. Daniel Castro was the man who made that play at second base for the Braves. One of our changes. Now Kinsler skies one toward Costanza in left. And that will retire the side. Outman hits the first batter. Then gives up the home run to Jeffrey Marte. And that ties it at three as we head to the seventh inning stretch. AeroCart.com to see the only 8-in-1 all-purpose lifter, carrier, and mover that lightens every load. Tie game now, 3-3, bottom of the seventh inning. Detroit goes to the bullpen once again. They're looking for a healthy return from this man, Bruce Rondon, who missed all of last year with Tommy John surgery. Had that a year ago in March. This is his fifth outing of the spring. And could make a difference in their bullpen for sure. Couple of changes for the Tigers. James Robbins is at first base. Josh Prince is now their second baseman. Joe Benson. Goes to work for the Braves first. Talking to Carlos Tosca, the Braves bench coach, about Benson. He likes him. Yeah, I've heard a lot of talk about him lately. I don't know much about him. Haven't missed my first time to see him hit. Braves signed him as a minor league free agent in January. Originally signed by the Twins, he was in the Marlins organization, played double A and triple A last year, Jacksonville and New Orleans. At 259, scored 71 runs, 10 homers, 62 RBIs in two spots. First professional contract was in 2006 with the Gulf Coast League Twins. He has big league experience that came in 2011 in Minnesota. At 239. Out of Joliet Catholic Academy in Illinois. Lives in Chicago in the offseason. And 
lashed out a play foul still two and two Rondon brought that one up there at 99 miles an hour so you're right if he's right that's another ninth it inning option would be a big help Up foul and out of play. Benson went to school in Joliet, Illinois. I think that's the hometown of our pal Mark Grant. Great Padres broadcaster. Can't wait to catch up with Mud during the regular season. Special year for his partner, Dick Enberg. He's the Ford Frick Award winner. He'll be headed to the Hall of Fame this July. As Benson couldn't check his swing on an 85 mile an hour slider. Rondon has a strikeout, one away in the seventh. Here's Perez. Braves will play the Astros tomorrow. Mike Fultonevich and Scott Feldman will hook up down in Kissimmee. Nick Marquecas told us earlier, if you're just joining us, that his plan is to be the DH. Get four at bats, we hope. Against the Strohs. Nick was kind enough to join us for an in dugout interview during the game. We appreciate that. It's funny how it's hard for me to still remember that the Astros are in the American League because I'm thinking, oh, they must be making a special accommodation for the DH right? tomorrow. He's bringing it. You bet. <laughs> Little chopper out towards short. Iglesias got his man by a step. Is also a guy who's going to make them better defensively. Not a bad offensive player, but just very gifted athletically at shortstop. And some youth. Yeah. And that's always yeah, important. Need that. So Rondone, 6'3", 275, has the first two outs here in the seventh. And Kayaspo, the batter, and he takes low. Rondon signed with the Tigers as an international free agent in September of 2007. A 97 mile an hour heaters turned around to right. Bobby Cox always said, "You throw it enough, hitter can, in the big leagues can time a jet." Tyus will pull that one for his second hit of the game. And he continues to stay hot this week. Seth Lomans again that came in for Kelly Johnson. We saw him yesterday. Four for four. Well, Dave Dombrowski referred to Rondon as a rare talent after the 2012 season. Their plan was to give him the closing opportunity in 2013. Made some mechanical changes, went down to the minor leagues, worked on those that year, got back to the big league club, wasn't their closer. Made his big league debut in late April against the Royals. Went back to the minor leagues, got his first big league save in August against the Indians in 2013. And late March, in fact, a year ago yesterday, it was revealed he had torn the ligament in his elbow. He had surgery, and he's coming back this year. I'll tell you what, if he's if he's come back in right at a year since surgery, mm -hmm. that's a rapid recovery by 
by most pitchers in terms of how long they're being given now to start pitching. Runner goes and a line drive caught at first by Josh Robbins and that will retire the side. Bruce Rondon named after Bruce Lee. Believe it or not, a score of seventh under his belt. We go to the eighth. Here on Fox Sports South, watch the Braves once again as they take on the Tigers at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. Rod Allen and Mario Impemba, our pals from the Tigers region, will handle the play-by-play -play duties over in Lakeland. So we wish them luck and hope you'll join us on Monday, March 30th. New pitcher for the Braves. We've seen Craig Kimbrell and this promised our first look at Jason Grilly. Jason Grilly's fourth game in a... Grapefruit League game. He too has pitched in several minor league camp games. There are his numbers last year combined between the Pirates and Angels. He was an All Star in 2013. Three innings pitched this spring, three hits and a run. All three hits and the run came in his first outing. This guy's a live wire, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I loved listening to him yesterday when we had him mic'd up. He's a big guy, 6'5, 230. And great hair. That's very important. Here's Iglesias. I knew you would notice that. <sighs> no balls and a strike. And foul back. It's on a couple levels for the Tigers. Good day for Detroit today. Their youngster, Kyle Lobstein, pitched a good ball game. Victor Martinez had three at bats, didn't have a hit, but made his spring debut today. Rondon looked very good. And youngster Jeffrey Martez hit a homer. For the Braves, Shelby Miller, five innings of one run ball. Craig Kimbrell, a perfect inning. And the Braves once again manufactured three runs of offense today. Good solid fundamental ABC offensive baseball. To second. And really will have his first out as he retires Iglesias. In 2013, when he was with Pittsburgh, I'm not going to say the Pirates snuck up on anybody that year because everybody knew they had some good young talent. But he was the closer on that ball club where the Pirates finally got it turned around and made a run in that division. And he was one of the one of the spark plugs for that whole ball club, Jason Grilly. An old Jason matchup here. Jason Krizan is up for the Tigers.
Warriors are shuffling their defense around here behind Grilly. As we told you, Freddy Gonzalez loves the flexibility and the possibilities that that allows him as the brave skipper. Yuri Perez has moved to center field. Joe Benson's gone to right. Corbin Joseph is in at second. Daniel Castro's moved from second to short. They still have a lot of players in camp. Good hook. 46 at last count. It's because there's so many jobs that are still unclaimed at this point. His hand drives that one to deep center. Perez backtracks to the track. He hit that ball a long way. Park big enough to hold it, though. Two outs. And Pedro Siriaco, by the way, has moved from short to third for Atlanta. So the infield, Siriaco, Castro. Benson at second. And Loman at first. Joseph. Excuse me, Joseph. Second. Yeah, Benson pardon. moved to right. Yeah, thank you. Corbin Joseph, I beg your pardon. Here's Tyler Collins. All for three with a couple of punch outs. Not a good hook. Knuckles and into the seats. And it's 0 2. Chase a high fastball and Jason Grilly a 1 2 3 eighth inning. Play of the game, late BC baseball by the Braves batsman. Base hit by Brzezinski, bench running was Constanza. He steals second, goes to third on a fly ball. Get out! Stay there! Stack up! You're scoring! You're scoring! Take your time! Easy, go! 
That's baseball, boys. Sure is, Bo. That was fun to watch. Well executed. Daniel Castro leads off for the Braves. This is Josh Zai, new pitcher for the Tigers. Manny Pena is behind the plate, new catcher for Detroit, too. Wholesale changes for the Tigers, too. As Castro gets it started. Astros season last year at Lynchburg and double-a Mississippi Back where it came from That'll make Kevin sights are happy won't it? I think a lot of people have to getting a rally started in the tie game in the eighth. So Castro's aboard representing the go ahead run. And Jose Costanza is the batter. If you weren't with us yesterday, Jose was brought over yesterday to play in the split squad game and did not get an invite to camp, but has been brought back because of some of the guys that are vying for an outfield spot haven't been doing so good. This guy always makes them good happen. He just butted for a hit. He's already stolen a base, scored a run as a pinch runner, and now he's got himself a bunt base hit when he's just trying to bunt the guy over. I can hit, you know, he hit 330 something last year at Gwinnett. Can run. Well, you were talking yesterday about how Brian Snitker was bragging about Jose Costanza and the job he did last year. So if he's coming back for these games in the last two weeks, you have to think he's in the mix somehow, some way. Plays like the ones he's turned in today have certainly helped his cause. Here's Schleyhuber. Snap throw back to second and in safely. Was Castro. <laughs> There's the handsome face of Jason Grilly. Nice flow, nice inning. Good Thank job. Thank you, guys. How you doing with all these long names this spring? Yeah, can you do something about that? Schluber and uh, I don't. Even, I can't say it. Even the Fultonjevits. Yeah, you're right where we are. We're just trying to shorten everything up. We just give nicknames around here. That's how we get through. Well, we said to John Hart, we had a, a Braves luncheon, Jason, earlier this year, and Joe looked at John at the start and said, hey, thanks a lot. <laughs> don't make it easy on the announcers this offseason. And now you guys getting your phonetics... Uh, in spring training here. Even then, it doesn't help. I can promise you that. Well, how's it feel to be an Atlanta Brave, Jason? We, uh, we, we had you on the microphone yesterday. Yeah. And we appreciate you doing that, but um, seems like you fit in real nicely. I'm enjoying being at home. I feel fresh. I'm in uh, my backyard, 20 minutes away from home, and uh, you know, just happy to be be a Brave. You know, a lot of good uh, tradition here. Heck of a lot of good pitchers that have wore this uniform, so I'm uh, proud to wear it as well. To an owner, Schleyhuber. Broken back ground ball, deep short. Sliding stop, good. Feed the second for the first out. That's still Iglesias at short. It is. Another nice play. Yes. Garrett 
Matt Loge. Okay. Well, good for him. Nice play. <laughs> hey, uh, Jason. Hey, that boy. Uh, ball looked like it's coming out of your hand real nice and easy. Breaking ball was sharp. That really snappy. You, you feel good where you are right now? Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, I don't want to peak too soon. There's a couple things uh, just uh, fine-tuning, you know, just keep, keep right where I'm at and, uh, you know, keep getting after it. You know, I'm trying to just be game ready. It's nothing. I've never taken spring training uh, lightly. You know, I've always tried to approach it as, yeah, we're getting ready, but I want to play the game hard uh, for what I got that day. And, uh, you know, at 38, I'm still feeling pretty good, so I can't complain. <laughs> no, not at all. You're playing in the big leagues at 38. There's a lot going on for you. Yeah. Not to be I was proud talking of. to Tommy Glavin, and uh, he played till 43. So I said, hey, man, is there any secret to getting, you know, into your 40s? That's kind of another goal of mine. So just making sure I'm on point and uh, some good footprints. You know, if you ask questions from those guys, we've had a lot of good legends coming in here at camp, which is another reason it's special to wear this uniform. We know we've had Fred McGriff, Charlie Liebrandt. Uh, many guys and, and Tommy Glavin was just uh, here and left today. Yeah, we got Matty Diaz coming in later in the week. Yeah. You know all about Matt Diaz. Yeah, I played with him. Great guy. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah, it's all coming to a close pretty quickly. April 6th seems like uh, spring training lasts forever, but man, opening day is right around the corner all of a sudden. Yeah, we'll get serious, get real, and um, let the games begin, as I'm saying, you know. These guys down in the bullpen, Jason, that you're around a lot. Craig Kimbrell, kind of a low-key guy. What's it been like for you to get to know him? Uh, I think it's just awesome, you know, uh, just building building the relationships that you you, you do. Uh, we got a lot of time down there in the bullpen, but we got such great characters here, uh, a lot of great personalities, good people. So I think it's going to be real easy to mesh in and mesh together, do what we need to do, and that's to win ball games. We got a really solid bullpen on paper. Just got to go out and do what we do and have done in the past. Good track record. Stay healthy is the biggest thing. Always is. And, uh, you know, just go out and, and, and protect leads. You're part of a pirate team, Jason, that from an outsider's perspective, a lot of folks a few years ago didn't know an awful lot about. You knew there were some really good, talented pieces. And all of a sudden, the Pirates, I don't want to say came out of nowhere, but made the playoffs, ended that curse that was uh, so prevalent since Sid slid for the Braves back in the early 90s. Do you see any parallels with that Pirate team and this Atlanta Braves team as far as the expectations and the talent level? Well, you know, like I said, uh, everybody nowadays, you hover around that 500 mark. It's always a goal. You want to stake around there, not let, get, get, let the season get away from you. Uh, you know, you have a one in three chance. Ten teams make it into the playoffs. Uh, so there's a good chance. You know, we just got to play good baseball, fundamental baseball. Um, I don't see why not. I like being an underdog because teams can kind of sleep on you and take you lightly. So if that's how we're being looked at, then by all means, let's play ball. Look at this great piece of hitting by Suriaga. A one-out single scores two runs, and the Braves manufactured these runs, Joe. This is uh, something, Jason, that was sorely missing from the Braves' offense the last couple of years. And, boy, since I've been here this week, this has been great execution all around by everybody, getting guys on, getting them over. And in this case, getting him in, it's fun to watch. I think, you know, play this game loose and having fun. Uh, sometimes when you're pressing, it, it, this game can be a lot harder than uh, than it is. Um, that's maybe not the correct way to say that statement. This is a tough game. And, uh, and when you do the right things, you're playing hard, things start flowing nice. Uh, we got a good clubhouse, good atmosphere here. A lot of positive attitude, so I'm excited for this this club this year. I really am. Yeah. No, I think what you said is the right thing because you got to play it relaxed and you can't be tense and tight and worried about making mistakes. You just got to let it fly. And um, from a fundamental standpoint, it's been it's been really fun to watch. Everybody's here is working hard. You know, there's an E column in there, but as long as we don't bring you know errors into the batter's box and miss pitches for the next at bat. The next batter, you know, you just got to keep going. Well, this game's getting away from Josh Zide here in the eighth inning as Atlanta's got runners at first and third. Now a five to three eighth inning lead. Now Benson's going to bat for the Braves. Jason, you guys have a very solid back of the bullpen setup between you. Uh, Jim Johnson and Craig Kimbrell. You ever been around 
that that kind of strength at the end of a bullpen before? I think, you know, it's tough to always compare. You know, like I said, it's one of those things where I'm hoping, just like in Pittsburgh, we, we got a, a nickname, the Shark Tank, and we had a lot of fun, and everybody started feeding off of each other. And, uh, you know, like I said, just we have fun. We go out there and, and focus on just closing out our inning, whatever inning they, that the ball is getting given to us. If we just do our job, I, I think we can be pretty good. Like I said, on paper, everything always looks great. But we got to go out there and just do what we're capable of doing, execute, and, and have fun doing. I think, you know, we got a solid bullpen, and we're going to need those guys in the middle, too. A lot of gets overlooked. They're, you know, they look at the back end of the bullpen, but those guys in the middle sometimes come in with those inherited runners and games on the balance where you're either up 5-3 or down 5-3, and you got to need that double play ball. Those guys are huge, and, and sometimes that's the most important part of the game. You've seen it all. You've done just about everything you can do in professional baseball from a <laughs> pitching standpoint. I think that's safe to say, but you've really been blessed the last three pitching coaches you've had the opportunity to pitch for. We have a lot of respect for Ray Searage and the job he's done with that pirate staff. Mike Butcher's terrific out there with the Angels. I know your experience with him was a brief one, and now you get a chance to work with Roger McDowell. That's three different guys in two years. Is that a difficult thing for a pitcher to, uh, to do even as a veteran like you are? No, I think what's what's been cool is that each one of those guys, yeah, they've they've uh, you know you talk the game, you respect each other, but um, all these guys have have kind of tried to learn me, um, you know, uh, just just communication, talking the game, something that you got to do, and and you tell them, hey, these are my keys. If I get off of it, you know, crack the whip and get me back and get me back and focus. But it's it's. Uh, Having the knowledge that some of these guys have, and, and just so far here with Roger, I mean, you can see why uh, everybody likes him around here. He's he's a good one to have on your side. Ball four to Joe Benson. Bases are loaded. Jason, you had a busy day today. Busy day with the microphone yesterday. Getting to know you is not going to be a problem. We can tell that already. <laughs> so, well, I appreciate yeah. it. It's a pleasure to have you here in Atlanta. Best of luck, and we'll see you down in Miami. Thanks, guys. Get All my right. running in here. There you go. Jason Grilly, our guest. Here in the eighth inning, Braves now up five to three and have the bases loaded for Yuri Perez. That's one of the fun things about spring training. We get to spend a few minutes with some of the players on the microphone, and because there are so many new guys on this roster, it really is refreshing for us to get a chance to let them show you their personalities on air. And yesterday with our sounds of the game with Jason and in that uh, brief interview we had a moment ago he gets it he's a pro's pro I think he's gonna be a wonderful addition to the Braves clubhouse culture not to mention being part of that three-headed monster that figures to work the seventh eighth and ninth innings in relief popped up shallow right off the bat of Perez and there's the second out couldn't agree more. You know, he's got the personality to keep everybody loose down there, uh, keep them in the ball game, and keep them loose. So he's a perfect fit for those guys. So bags are full for Cedric Hunter. He's out at Decatur, Georgia. It's greater in Decatur, we've been told. Like this guy, too. Talked about him yesterday. Sharply hit. Nice pick up at first. And Hunter is retired. Boy, big day for Pedro Siriaco. Two hits, three RBIs. And he's put the Braves in front, heading to the fateful line. 5 3 is your score.
But three more outs to get for the Braves in today's game against the Tigers. And here is the fifth man to work out of the fourth man to work out of the rotation. Fifth overall for the Braves, Donnie Veal. He's in the mix for a left-handed spot. He's been in the big leagues in the last three, four years with the White Sox, among a couple of other ball clubs. His last two outings, two innings of zeros across with a walk and a strikeout. Throws hard. As long as he's throwing strikes, he's in a good place. So Veal will have Manny Pena first. Boy, McCann, their kid catcher for the Tigers, pretty impressive behind the plate. He was a semifinalist a couple of years ago for the Johnny Bench Award, the best college catcher. You can see why they like him a lot. Very strong arm. So Pena, that's his first at bat. was originally a Cubs prospect. Pirates got him in the Rule 5 draft at Tommy John surgery in 2010. And then he went to the White Sox, now the Braves, and he's promptly come in and thrown three straight out of the zone. Kind of started that way a couple of days ago, but was able to bounce back, even through a couple pitches behind a right-handed hitter, and then recovered. Once he had properly loosened him up. He pitched in the Dominican Winter Leagues this offseason and a four pitch walk. Here's James Robbins. He was hit by a pitch and scored on Marte's homer and that tied the game for Detroit in the seventh. Still some roster decisions in the Braves infield. Down again, there's Kelly Johnson's name uh, filling both sides, both the infield and the outfield possibilities. Uh, naturally, you've got Freeman, Chris Johnson, and Andrelton Simmons, who are pretty much locks on the infield, but it's just a matter of who's going to play second base right now. It looks like Jace Peterson, and that means then who are your backups? And you need somebody that can play shortstop. That's not Kai Aspo. It's not Kelly Johnson. So whoever one of your backups you choose, Phil Goslin can play shortstop. Right. Uh, there needs to be one of those guys needs to be able to play short. And in the case of Kelly Johnson, that's what Freddie Gonzalez was talking about. He can play everywhere else in the infield except shortstop, but Kelly can play the outfield too. So. If you're a jack of all trades player, you're going to have a good long look in spring training for the Braves. And many have. As we told you earlier, this will be Joe's and my final spring telecast. The Braves will be on the 30th. That game will be broadcast by the Fox Sports Detroit crew. And then we'll join you on. April the 6th down in Miami. We'll have a special one-hour Braves Live. Jerome Jurinovich will be hosting that. Christina Fitzpatrick will be new to our crew this year. She'll be working with us on the sideline with the clubhouse reports. Jen Hildreth will be along, along with Paul Bird. It's a swing and a miss. Bill got Robbins for the first out. Brian Jordan, Matty Diaz will be along with Jerome in the studio and out on the outfield set for Braves live pregame and postgame. Of course, our great crew, our producer Brian Woodrum, Mike Miller, Gary Lehman, our directors. Eric Kendall, our AD, Gretchen Caney. Our statistician and chief tormentor, Gretchen's going to be producing some games on Braves telecast this year. We're excited about that. Yeah, maybe some of that torment will come full circle. There you go. 
I have a feeling if you I just said that so be mm -hmm. talked about and of course can't wait to get home and see all of our great home production crew all of our great cameramen I just think it's going to be a fun year I, I think it's going to be a fun team to watch I keep saying that I believe it we've seen evidence of that here today about how they've scored their runs they've got they've got some whittling down to do in terms of who they select to be their backups in the outfield their backups on the infield even how many catchers are they going to carry to back up Bethancourt who's still out right now with a flu bug to me right now a big key to this ball club is a when is Marquecas going to be able to play right is he going to be able to start the season on time if he is great but the next one is the bullpen and who fills in those gaps that we've been talking about today popped up shallow left center field Costanza got a good jump now the Braves are out away from a 5-3 win. Hope you'll join us at Turner Field beginning on April the 10th. That's when the home schedule starts with the New York Mets. Braves, as you know, have great events all year long. The Georgia Lottery, Friday Night Fireworks. Kids run the bases on Sundays. Post-game concerts, bobblehead giveaways, and more. Check out the great Braves promotion schedule online at Braves.com. Jeff McVaney is the final hope for the Tigers. All of a sudden, after a shaky start, four-pitch walk by Veal, he's had very good command. That's exactly what he did a couple of days ago. His fastball looks like it's running all over the place. He also... Fired a pretty good changeup to Martinez to retire him too. McVaney got jabbed, and now the Braves are a strike away. Ninth inning seals the deal for the Braves, who beat the Tigers 5-3. Atlanta had 12 hits in the ball game and manufactured a bunch of runs. I think every single one of the Braves' hits was a single today. Wasn't that fun? Braves five, Tigers three. We'll recap it for you in a minute.